as we mentioned, this month is Diabetes Awareness Month. Last week we talked about the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Dr. Beth Kitchen joins us now to talk about a simple test you can get to find out if you have it, but also what you can do to control your blood sugar. Dr. Beth, good to see you this morning. It's good to see you too, Mike. Very important we get that test, right? Exactly right. Last week we talked about all the bad things that can happen if blood sugar stays too high for too long. Things like kidney disease, heart disease, high blood pressure, all kinds of bad things can happen. But here's the good news. There's a lot you can do about it to prevent those bad things. But before we get into that, I want to talk about how do you know if you have diabetes? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to take a look at the numbers here. And what you do is you get a fasting blood sugar, very simple test to do. They run it all the time in the labs, but the fasting is very important. So you try to get it first thing in the morning before you've had anything to eat or drink. And that's going to give you the most accurate number. If your blood sugar is 99 milligrams per deciliter, that's how they measure it, mm -hmm. milligrams per deciliter. If it's below that or below, you're in normal range, so you don't have diabetes. Okay. Once it gets to 100 to 125, we call that pre-diabetes, which there's a lot you can do to get that back down to normal or at least prevent you from going to diabetes. And then 125 or higher is diabetes. Okay. So it's very important, and I stress again, mm -hmm. get that checked when you're fasting. I've had patients come in, they say, look, my blood sugar's high, and I'll say, what time did you get it done? And they'll say in the afternoon, and I say, "How did, did you eat? They said, oh, yeah, I ate lunch before. Well, right. it's going to turn those numbers off. Yeah, you don't want that. It's going to spike it. All right, let's just say you're in that, that pre-diabetic level. Uh, right. What is the next step then? Your doctor will most likely re recommend lifestyle habits for you. The first one is to get to a healthy weight. This does not mean going on a strict diet, losing a ton of weight. What we find is when people lose sometimes even just five to 10 pounds, if they are overweight, again, this is if you're overweight, um, then that can really drop that blood sugar down. It sensitizes your body's cells to take in that blood sugar when insulin signals it to. Remember, we talked about type two diabetes, and that's what we're talking about today because it's the most prevalent kind, but the cells don't pay attention as much to the insulin. Now, get to a healthy weight if you can, but more importantly, get moving, move your body, exercise. It doesn't have to be at the gym. It can be walking 10 minutes, three times a day. It could be gardening. Uh, all those things are moving your body. And that again, makes your cells less resistant to the insulin. And then the last one is of course, eat a healthy diet. We really stress fruits, vegetables, and lots of fiber that can help lower that blood sugar. And then if so you have- No, I'm no, sorry, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, and then if you have uh, diabetes, I think we might have to skip ahead here, but, uh, you know, obviously yeah. your, your doctor's going to be able to help you with what, you know, what type of injectable meds you may need and insulin right. you may need. But there are a couple other things that they may recommend. And uh, your first two are a low carb diet, but also oral medications. Talk about those two. Right. So if you are diagnosed with diabetes, the same habits for pre-diabetes, but then sometimes if your blood sugar is not coming down, there's some good evidence that really low carb diets can help with lowering that blood sugar and maybe even cure your diabetes. Now you need to do this with a registered dietitian who's certified in diabetes education because it's, you have to make sure this is a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, yes, there are all these medications. Some are oral, uh, so you take them by mouth. There's a lot to choose from and your doctor can help you to pick the one that works best for you. And then of course, all the very popular injectables like Ozempic, those have been very powerful and helping people uh, with diabetes, and you also lose a little bit of weight. But they were first developed for people with type 2 diabetes. And then very rarely, Mike, sometimes people need to actually add extra insulin into the body. But these are all the different things that you should discuss with your doctor um, and get on the right medication to lower your blood sugar if you can't do it with diet and exercise alone. Dr. Beth Kitchen, we appreciate it. Such an important issue this month and really any month to talk mm -hmm. about. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. All right. Well, families with college.